Hi everyone, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow From E5B. Today, we're going to be dividing and transplanting some perennials, moving a rose, and doing general fall maintenance around the garden. All right, so the first part of general maintenance in the garden in the fall is making sure that your mums are well watered. Mums are very thirsty plants. They like to have nice moist soil and the best time to water is in the morning. So that leaves and things can dry off by evening time. So I'm just gonna take a little time, water in our mums. We don't wanna water in our grasses too much because they like it a little bit dry, but look at the color on these coral mums, Christopher. I'm really in love with that color. The coral is really, really pretty. It is pretty. And then these little pink mums. And you know what? I saw that comment that said $1 fine to Eric for putting the mums, keeping them in their pop before putting them in there. <laughs> I can understand. I'll pay my dollar fine as a convenience fee. <laughs> but yeah, these mums get watered every morning. And our purple and red combo in that pot with the purple fountain grass is kind of funny because I don't know if I see that much difference between the purple and red color in the mums. Yeah, we got to wait to see when it opens up because this red almost has a brown look in the bud as they're opening. So we'll see what they do in another week or two. Yeah. And did you see our double delight apple blossom begonias are still going strong? So pretty. And how do we know when our peaches are ready? They look like they're ready. They feel like they might have a squish to them. Okay. We'll have to find a recipe. I don't know. A recipe? <laughs> well, we can't eat them off of the oh, tree. Oh, that's itself. right. Oh, yeah. They're not supposed to be too tasty. Take a look at this purple leaf sand cherry. This is one of the things we're taking out today because we're just kind of over all the disease it always has. It always attracts Japanese beetles. It's uh, not the prettiest structure right here. And so this is coming out today. One of our other chores today is dividing these Magic Show Pink Potion Salvia. You can see that they're not very happy right now. They don't get enough sun because they're underneath this unfortunate purple leaf sand cherry. There's actually 10 of them throughout here. So I'm going to divide them up, clean them up, and create a much neater border with this salvia in front of the blue fortune or blue yeah Bella. do you think we should divide the blue fortune and the crazy fortune and maybe fill in the spot where the purple leaf sand cherry was with them you know that might not be a bad idea because at one point we thought we were going to put a nine bark here or some other dark foliage but it's really full and obviously the north wind grass is going to take up space the lemony lace elderberry has far exceeded yeah, our Yeah, we didn't expect it to actually we did not do think that well because our other two elderberries don't do well. Yeah, and then this is a birch clump right here. So eventually this is going to be a 30-foot birch tree underplanted with the lemony lace. I don't think we need the dark foliage here if we have the beautiful crazy fortune and blue boa agastache. Blue fortune. Is it blue fortune? Yeah. Okay, uh, we're rich. <laughs> so many fortunes. We have fortunes. And fortunate. Then, we're fortunate. We're fortunate. So maybe this lamb's ear has to slide over. Of course, the beautiful lemon coral sedum is going to be going. It's always sad to take out annuals when they're looking good, but now is the time for us to transplant. It's actually 62 degrees right now. With this and I know that you can save that lemon coral sedum. We could like pick it up and put it in a pot and put it in the garage and stuff. We'll see how tired we are. Yeah. And gotta... then we'll take out some of this yeah, you got to weigh the effort versus your energy level. <laughs> exactly. So that's going to be on the docket for today, getting this purple leaf sand cherry out, dividing up some of these perennials, kind of reshaping this area. Yeah, cleaning a up bit. this corner. Yeah. It's a little congested and there's there's a lot of beautiful Ooh. things in it. And I think they could be more beautiful if we tend to them. Yeah. Eric, swing around here where we have the Essex square trellis with a sensation honeysuckle that's growing beautifully. You can see it is a foot and a half taller than the square trellis. This is going to be replaced. We're going to be cutting the honeysuckle back and replacing it with the new Jardin tower 
from Gardner Supply. It's 30 inch in diameter and eight feet tall. This is going to be incredible. It's going to be such a statement piece when you first walk in the garden. But because it's so big, this catman is going to be right in the way. This catman's going to come up and slide right over here underneath the tottering <clears throat> by Gently Roses that have had a little bunny activity underneath. Yeah, but those bunnies. That buttery yellow color of the single rose on, or this above the beautiful blue catmint is going to be gorgeous. Tucked behind the trellis is a Roald Dahl David Austin shrub rose growing beautifully. It got transplanted last year and unfortunately it's getting transplanted again. I know. You know, this garden is brand new from last year. So sometimes, you know, you make you, you don't nail it the first time. So that David Austin rose, it's a roll doll that's going to be transplanted over here in front of the Tromnar spruce. And I was thinking that that orange color of the blooms would be stunning the, the against blue this here. blue foliage of the Tromnar. And bloomerang pink dwarf lilac that we did not think was doing anything for us. Look, it's a pretty little color. So it hopefully is. this continues to put up um, some more pink and then we'll have the pink, the orange, the blue, be a really nice little combo. And then there's something else we're moving too. Yes. Look at these anemones looking great. Fall in love sweetly anemone and they can take full sun. Yes, and we actually are adding in a few more of them and transplanting some to make another big drift. Oh, look, James is blooming. James L. Austin. Beautiful yeah. fragrance on that. There's so, the Tough Stuff Top Fawn that I planted yesterday. That was our 114th hydrangea in the ground. 114. We got more coming, as you know. So this little spot over here was filled with columbine. Now it seems to just have a, a lamium that's popped up, but the columbine has been massacred by rabbits. And we realize that this area is pretty shady all the time. This is the only time it's gonna get sun, which is just some dappled sun between the juniper. So we're gonna transplant a few of our shade perennials that are throughout the garden in places that are either not appropriate or frankly, they've been overgrown by bigger stuff. We also have five pink profusion salvia that are, again, not in enough sun. And if you swing around here, you can see that they're also going to be buried underneath the bobo. <laughs> it was one of those things where we planted them before. They're one of the first things. And now they're just struggling in the sun. Here. Yeah. So they're going to move somewhere where there's currently annuals. And struggling in the shade, I mean. Yeah. But we'll find a good spot for them and they'll be much happier there. Yeah, you know where I think they should go? I was thinking they could go over here. They could go over here where these Supertunia and Vesta pink are. I think that's a good spot, especially because the little lime punch are going to get about four feet wide. So they're going to fill this chunk up pretty well. Yeah. And I'll just tuck them a little closer to the uh, Lion King Iris. Also on our chore list today is to take after this Thunbergia. <laughs> This is, is it lemon appeal? This is lemon appeal. This is an incredibly appealing. It's peeling. huge. It has crushed the tutor. Yes. And it actually has pressed a lot of the rose. Yes. This way. So this is a bad plan. Bad, bad, bad plan. But there is a really beautiful Emily, Emily Bronte. Bronte bloom. So beautiful. Yeah. All right, so we're going to take this purple leaf sand cherry out. We are done with it looking diseased. We're done with its uh, ugly growth habit. We wanted this dark foliage in here, but this wasn't the right choice. Wish us luck. I think this is going to be a, a heavy duty job. You got this. And there's drip in the way, so hopefully I don't damage any drip. I've got to redo the drip anyway, I'm All sure. Right. 
Okay. Nothing more fun than removing a tree from an established garden border. Yeah. I really want to go right here. Do you mind if I move the drip over a little Push bit? Push it. Okay. Ooh, the agus actually smells really good. I think we really wanted this purple leaf sand chair to be something it couldn't be for us. Yes. <laughs> I think what we wanted was a smoke bush effect that didn't have the puffy smoke blooms that stayed tall and narrow <laughs> when in fact the purple leaf sand cherry would turn into a small tree. Oh wow, look at these roots on this thing. Is this one of the things that'll like regrow from roots being left in the ground? Well, that's a good question. We'll be finding that out in the next year or two. Okay, so now that that's done, let's go to this back side. Hopefully any wildlife back here has hit the road at this point. And by wildlife, I mean snakes. <laughs> Not, we don't use that word. What are those things? What are you looking at? Oh, I think they're seed heads from the grass. I thought we had like an infestation of something. Oh. I would imagine people watching this are probably horrified at the clustiness of which this is happening. That's okay. <laughs> this isn't glamorous with me. This is grow for me. I know. You got this. Let's cheer. Oh, I know on. I got it. I'm just also trying not to swear. Oops, sorry, lamb's ear. That's okay. Wow. <laughs> What's it attached to? <laughs> Probably the drip. <laughs> the roots are cutting open purple. This is cool. I think it's this drip holding it back. Oh. No, it's... Jeez Louise! Okay, there's just this one. <laughs> okay, maybe one more thing. <laughs> Good thing I'm not able to help him at the moment. <laughs> one more, come on, you got this. It's going very well. Oh wait, oh. This is a pretty hardy root. It's a very slippery root. Ah, there we go. We're free. Wow. Goodbye, diseased, ugly tree. Look at the inside of the purple sand cherry root. It's like purple. Root. That's cool. It is pretty cool. Well, I think we should get the rest of that cleaned out and that salvia. Yeah. Then we'll divide some of this agastache, fill in that gap back there, bring all the salvias forward to the front of the bed. It's going to look really pretty. It'll tidy it up, yeah, for sure. Awesome. Let's get started. All right, so I took one of these Magic Show Pink Potion Salvias out to show you what I'm going to do to divide it. You can see this one didn't get a lot of sun, but it does have a lot of roots. Um, there's a couple options. You can use your saw if you needed to. You can use a sharp implement. You could rip it apart with your bare hands into chunks with your brute strength. So I think what I'm going to do with these, I'm just going to have, I only pulled five of them because they were the five that had been in originally. Um, I think I'm just going to pull them apart into some natural 
divisions kind of find a spot like right here where it will come apart. And we'll plant these in this little spot here where that rock is. So these serendipity alliums are starting to split right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my big shovel, put it right in the middle, and uh, go in hard. And I'm cutting off the back half of this one, since that's where the baptisia is really encroaching. Yeah. Oh, it's lifting easy. Yeah. And then what you get is this. Awesome. And so we have a new serendipity. It's but behind have... the tough stuff, the top funds. Great. Yeah. And yet what's left is a little bit brutal, but that's going to turn itself into a nice circle again. Yeah, in this will be fine. And in the meantime, I'm going to take these little chunks and I'm going to put them at the back behind here. So the deer are like, ew, onion, I'm not going in there. At least that's my theory. <laughs> yeah, that is the theory and the hope. So the game plan, of course, completely changed. We ended up pulling out this sting arborvitae that was getting swallowed by the Baptisia. We had planted it last year. And you can see that it did not get enough sun on the bottom half of it. So that's getting moved towards the front of the border. We divided and spread out some of the blue boa and crazy fortune agastache and kind of mixed them around. Pulled up the lamb's ear, pulled up a tidbit, moved a rock, divided the serendipity allium, pulled out all of the, is it pink potion salvia? It is magic show pink potion yes. salvia. And so now the next step is we're going to take all these things that we pulled out and kind of put them back in place. Okay, so we have transplanted the Firelight Tidbit Hydrangea here. So it kind of continues on with the Autumn Joy Sedum. Christopher is in the midst of dividing the Magic Show Pink Potion Salvia. The Sting Arborvitae has been transplanted. So this is going to be a big full drift of the Magic Show Pink Potion. And then we're going to arrange this rock and this lamb's ear in front of the crown princess margarita hoping that that deters some deer because between the serendipity allium and the lamb's ear neither of which they like to eat hopefully they won't go further into the bed for the rose does that make sense fingers crossed fingers crossed so might be wishful thinking dividing throwing biotone in the hole this is going to be a big drift how far, how close to the edge is it coming? Oh, it might come right to the edge, depending on where we put the rock. Well, maybe we should put the rock in now. I think the rock's going to separate the salvia. Maybe the rock will go in front of the serendipity, which looks wonky because, you know, it's been cut in half right now, but next year it'll grow back fine. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll play with it. Maybe I'll divide those serendipities in half again so they're not just straight lines. And then we'll have smaller chunks. Maybe we'll do them in quarters. That wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah. And then we can do more of them for more onion smell to keep the deer away from the rows. Here we have the top stuff, top fun hedge. And behind it, when we planted them, we realized that we were going to have a little bit of a gap. And there's some serendipity allium in there. And we thought, hey, maybe if we divided our serendipities from the back, we could add a few more in here to give some of that strappy foliage and pretty purple bloom interest in that little gap. So how about this? We have a lot of serendipity allium that we can fit in there. I'm not even sure we're gonna be able to use all of this, but we're gonna go ahead, add a few of them in there, and we'll see where the rest of them go. All right, so we have transformed this area. It is done. We moved our Firelight Tidbit Hydrangea right here next to the Autumn Joy Sedum. You're going to have to get in a little closer. Christopher really divided these Magic Show Pink Potion uh, sal Veronica's? Salvia. Oh, salvia. And they weren't looking so hot to begin <clears throat> with, so I'm not too shocked at how they look right now. But we will see if they come back in spring, and if not, they will be replaced. Yeah, they got a layer of compost and they got watered in. Behind that is a drift of Blue Boa Agastache and uh, Crazy Fortune Agastache, or Blue Fortune. 
Uh, our sting arborvitae has been pulled out from the Baptisia area and it's been moved forward so it'll get more sun. Um, very well watered in. Got some lambs here in front of the Crown Princess Margarita um, on our Essex trellis from Gardener Supply. Divided up some of the Serendipity Allium and uh, just made a fresh clean drift with it. We're looking at the Monarch on the Verbena Bonariensis. Getting so ready pretty. for its big journey. Lovely. And uh, so we took some of this Serendipity Allium and we planted some over here underneath the Instant Karma Elderberry. And those of you that follow us on Instagram probably saw uh, the groundhog video where I was inside and I was at the kitchen island and I looked out the dining room window and I saw this shaking and we had thought a deer had been coming through to eat it, but it turns out it was a groundhog. Um, and so I thought maybe planting serendipity allium in front of it would deter the groundhog because the air, the fragrance in the air right now is very oniony. Very oniony. And just take a look at the blackhawk's blue stem grass, which is a native here and it's the prettiest color. I think next year, though, we'll take this Instant Karma way back and maybe it'll reshape itself. Yeah, I hope so. I don't know. The elderberries don't do great for us. That's why I'm so surprised the lemony lace did so well. And then the last of the serendipity divisions went behind our new Tough Stuff Top Fun hedge to kind of fill in that little gap that was left behind. These look great here. Yeah, I think it'll be very nice. So that's the beginning. What's next on our agenda? We have to move Roldal. We're going to move some Catmint. We're going to take care of that Thumbergia that's going a little crazy. And there's another Salvia you want to move. Yes, we're going to move another Salvia over to where the hot pink mini Vista is. Great. There. All right, well, let's take a little break. And then we'll finish Hydrate up. and come back. So we're over here in a shadier spot of the garden where we have a couple of these pink profusion salvia and around the corner we have three more. Originally this was a much smaller Hetsy juniper. It's gotten a bit bigger and now these are in way too much shade. So they put out a couple bloom stalks but not enough. Well, so I also gonna... think when we planted them I don't even think we had the garden arch installed yet. No the arch wasn't even here and the whatchamacallit. I think it was kind of like a mini hedge around the juniper. Yes and the yeah. generous gardener has gotten much too dense, so we can't really see those. So these are gonna get dug up along with those other ones. And in this space, we have some Miss Piggy Virginia. And I think depending on space, we're gonna put a drinking gourd hosta or a wee hosta over here as well, just for a little bit of color variation. Are we dividing these too, Christopher? I wasn't planning on it, but I think we're going to because they are ready to be divided. Yeah, look at that. There's a perfect middle. Well, that'll be fine. The place where we're putting them can take a nice drift. Oh, I love these Invincible Spirit 2 hydrangeas you're next to. As you're digging, I'm Better. just going to show them off. So this is a fresh bloom because they do rebloom. See how they are, they're budding up for the fall. Um, but then they also have a beautiful dried bloom. Is that one? Oh, those poor salvias are just smothered. Is that a salvia or a weed? This is a salvia desperately trying to oh find my the gosh. sun. Wow. All right, well, we definitely let that go on too long. Yeah, a little bit of grass in there, but it's mostly salvia. Okay, the space is cleaned out, and we are going to now Place. clean up, clean up these, you know. Let me have them clippers. Please. Yeah, let's cut off that, the dead stuff, and then we'll kind of divide them up and see how many we get. Frankly, I'm just going to take leave the green on them oh, or not. There's a low, there's low green down there. That's what I'm looking at. All right, this I'm going to cut right in half, I think. What do you think? See right there? Mm. Oh, 
from one. Okay, well, I think it's actually three. Awesome. Three babies. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Let's see how we want to do this. Remember that the Gomfrina are an annual. I think we do one, two, three. We'll let him place them, but everybody knows that I usually end up uh -huh. <laughs> with the placing and spacing. <laughs> I like to pretend. I like to pretend <laughs> that what your placing is going to stay. I can hear the comments now. Let Christopher place them. That straight line looks beautiful. It's not going to be straight line forever. <laughs> I'm thinking about the edge. That's what I'm thinking about. And the fact that these little line punch are going to get pretty big. I also move much slower than Christopher. I'm much more methodical. In the dividing, I like, you know, I would do it differently, but that's okay. This isn't how I would be doing it. Right. That's okay, you can rearrange them. Yeah. <laughs> well, these get about 20 inches wide for maturity, so I don't know if we want them that close together. And I also, so many spiders in our garden. I feel, is that a good thing? I feel like that's probably good, right? Spiders are good, bad? I think the spiders must be good. I'm assuming good. I feel like I want like more of a zigzag along the edge. Right? And then there. Oh, what is that? That is a weird critter. Tucked in here underneath our blood good Japanese maple are two Miss Piggy Virginia that were very recently underneath this Empress Wu hosta leaves. So they don't look so great, and we definitely underestimated the size of Empress Wu. Word to the wise, Empress Wu is going to get that big, and she's gonna get that much bigger than you think she's gonna get. So we're gonna pull those two out and put them in the spot where the pink profusion just came from, which is a very happy trade, and they will thrive in that location. Now here's a fun little gardening mishap. Underneath this Aurelia, Sun King Aurelia, that's the one. Isn't that the right name, Eric? Sun King Aurelia. Sun King Aurelia. Is this really interesting foliage? Isn't that pretty? That little variegated foliage? Well, that is one of three Star of Beauty Astrantia that Eric had picked up. And when he planted them here, the Sun King, being a perennial, was tiny. And then it grew to almost its full size here. So we're going to pull those out too and move them with the Virginia. And that should be a very nice combination. All right, so I've dug up the two Miss Piggy Virginia, which were really not happy, tucked under or smothered really underneath. Yeah, first too much literal shade. Okay, so smothering. Clean that up. I'll do that with the other one. We were only able to find two of these Astrantia, but that's okay. We'll put them close together and we'll just pretend it's one big one. Well, there's two of each thing. I mean, I always, I struggle with planting two of things because I think it looks weird. I don't mind fours, but I think two looks weird. So I'm wondering if there can be a way that they're arranged where they are interwoven so it looks purposeful. Actually, look at this right here. Yeah, like this. Oh, is this dividing? Oh, it's... I just broke it. <laughs> is that dividable? No, but you know what we could do is we could go get the brand new for 2024 peppermint patty that's over there and make a little trio. No, I really like that foliage where it is. I think we'll have to make this look purposeful with the Astrantias.
Wow, those really went downhill. Well, I know that the Jim Dandy is going to get a little bigger, so I don't... I mean, do we just do something simple like that? Uh, I think pig squeak on the edge. Pig squeak right here, where that footprint is. Yep. And then the Astrantia in between them. Okay. Like front and back of each other. Like in front of the electric cord and behind the electric cord. There. Yeah, but shifted back. What if I put a drinking gourd hosta right behind it? Do we have one to spare? We certainly do. I'll be yeah. right back. I'm going to follow you. That Lamium is waking up. I know. The Lamium loves the cool weather. But yeah, here's where that other Virginia is, and I just think that foliage looks excellent there. So I wouldn't move that. He's doing his snake smack because he's... Not that any of us love coming across a snake. So there's a drinking gourd hosta right there. Yeah, let's grab that. We'll grab that drinking gourd. Isn't there something else back there too? We. Uh, let's leave the we because it's variegated. Yes, and it'll kind of pop against the back yeah. there. And we don't want variegated next to the Astrantia because the Astrantia is variegated. Made that mistake. And you better not be filming house. me in this position. I am filming you right now. I'm angling, so it's super flattering, right, guys? That's that's our uh, Gatsby Pink Oak Leaf Hydrangea. <laughs> oh, and Teasing Georgia has a hold of him. Oh wow, that's awesome! What a beautiful specimen! Let's walk through the imaginary hydrangea room. Got to walk this way as much as possible to remember what it was like when there was grass. I think tucked under the juniper. Yep. Here, well, you know what? let's switch. Oh, there we go. I think that's it. I think that works. I would adjust. No, I think that'll work. I just want to make one adjustment. Take this. The drinking gourd might get much bigger now, remember. That's okay. I don't think he likes that Astrantia as much. I do. All right, I'm going to get these planted and then we'll check back in. Okay. All right, we added a little compost to clean the area up, but the drinking gourd, the two Miss Piggy Virginia, the Astrantia, or uh, Masterwort, I think is the other name for it. And then there were two Ajugas. Yes, I know. We were, are aware of the caution we need to have when we're having any Ajuga, like this one or this one, but we'll keep them under control. They're close to the edge, so we'll be able to see how rambunctious they get. But I think this area looks really nice and it'll be great as uh, it becomes even deeper shade. So now is a great time of year to plant some fall in love sweetly anemones. We already had a small clump here. We've since pulled out a porcupine grass because I didn't care for the variegation on the porcupine grass next to the variegation on the Shiloh Splash River birch. And instead, we're going to fill this spot up with some Fall in Love Sweetly anemones. Beautiful. There's a couple over here that we dug from a spot that hadn't taken so well. So we'll be able to make this a pretty sizable clump in one yeah. shot. And what's cool about these is they can take full sun. Um, they spread, but very slowly, not nearly um, like the traditional anemones. Um, but yeah, they're really pretty. All right, let's put these in the ground and we'll show you how they look. All right, Eric's watering them in. 
They look cute. This will be so nice when it's one big old neon pink drift. I'm going to dive in here and see if I can start getting some of these vines out. Oh my gosh. That thing's a monster. Well, here's the roots. I got some. Some what? Of the vine. Oh, good. <laughs> Is the tutor bent? Are the legs bent that are going into the ground? No. <laughs> Here. Oh my God. Take this. Ow. Ridiculous. There might be a rose attached to it. Careful. Oh yeah, there is. This is off our list of things to plant. Yes. Close to anything. <laughs> this has to be like in us on its own. Far from anything. Far from anything. Much bigger trellis. That's for sure. Beautiful. Success. Now we can finally get to that bird bath that is filth. At least the trellis didn't get damaged. Yeah, just... I'm glad I was expecting it to be bent, bent up out of How shape. How is that? You thought it would be bent up out of shape. That I looks did. good. So that's straight up and down-ish. Well, we got a lot done today. I mean, we didn't get everything done on our list. We most had, of it. Most yeah, of it. I mean, we did get almost everything. We didn't get rolled down moved yet, but that's... Sometimes you just get tired and you got to move on with your day. Yeah. We got a lot of dividing done, a lot of transplanting, and I think it was a full day. Yeah, I'm really proud of us. I think we did a good job. Yeah. So again, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me 5B. Thanks for growing with us.